30 feels like a milestone of being youthful, the blog. I am Kim Beegler. I am the owner of Youthful Fiber Farm and Mill, and I'm sitting here in my house today. I'm not at the mill. We'll get to that. Um, if you're joining us for the first time, I own a wool mill. My husband is a grass seed farmer, and we also have a small fiber flock of animals and other animals that are not fiber. And anyway, I just talk about everything from mill life to farm life to all the in-betweens that make it happen. So welcome. And if you're returning, thanks for coming back. You may notice we are not at the mill. So some things have changed this week nothing big but I walked into the mill yesterday and it was it's very cold we're going through a cold snap at night during the day not so bad as long as the sun is out at night um, it's been down into the low 20s which for us is cold and um, I walked into the mill yesterday which the mill is always a little frigid when I first get there I have to crank up we have this huge force air gas heater that makes this whole big old building in theory warm um and i walked in and i was like yeah at least it's gonna be warmer inside no such luck my heater was on literally blasting freezing air uh so the heater went out of course the coldest night i think it was 23 24 that night and the heater went so i can't sit in there i worked for a few hours and I'll probably go back in and work for a few hours today being very specific about what I'm doing and not staying down uh, it got up to I think 40 in the building yesterday uh, anyway we're here and I sent wish the cat off to board because it was just too cold for her I thought she could have made it but why make her so we're here we got to 500 subscribers, you guys. So exciting since the last time I saw you two weeks ago, 500 subscribers. So thank you guys for joining. Thank you for watching. Thank you for buying for those of you that do, but you don't have to, but it's 100% appreciated. It keeps us eating, keeps the animals eating for sure. So anyway, welcome everybody. It's been two weeks. I honestly was like, how has it been two weeks? I don't, I don't know. So I don't even know what's really happened. Mitch just said it's winter, which I guess it is. It just is like we just roll through it. Um, no huge milestones, which we're kind of used to. Um, I'm trying to think what I, oh, I do have to say before I forget, for anybody watching this, the morning of, we were supposed to have a shop open day today when this is airing and it is not happening. I canceled it due to the current COVID-19 surge. I figured why bring a ton of people together vaccinated or not, which most of us are vaccinated, but uh, why risk it? And our healthcare workers need a reprieve desperately. And so if we can do one small thing to help that, so be it. So I have the next one scheduled for February 26th. Hopefully things will have started to settle back down. We'll see. Um, also bear with me, I'm trying on some new makeup. I don't wear it very often, but I do enjoy wearing it. And uh, some of my makeup, <laughs> Is shockingly old so I threw it out and said you know what buy yourself a few new things so here I am okay so you guys behave the one thing about being home is all my indoor animals are here so they are forced to behave okay so farm update and I don't have my notes up here as I usually do so sorry guys I have to look down occasionally um farm update things are chill uh, we found a new, last time I was talking about eggs and how you find eggs randomly. And I should be clear about when I find eggs, what I do, because I know people have all sorts of comments about what to do or what to think about that. But we did find a new batch of eggs, Mitch did, and there was about 13 eggs there. But the exciting part about this was that they were my olive eggers who are just starting to lay. So when I find eggs, we generally know the hiding spots and they do move chickens love to have a spot and then I swear they know that I'm onto the spot and so then they move to the next spot and we usually try to leave a couple eggs marked in a spot so as not to freak them out completely that all their eggs are disappearing and then we know the egg that's been sitting there for a while um I'm generally if I just find a batch of eggs out of nowhere they get tossed because it's not worth the risk uh, and I know there's all different ways. One way is like to float an egg in water or to put an egg in water. And if it starts to float, then it's probably not good anymore. There's also, but we have really hard water and I swear that doesn't even work with our eggs. So, um, 
Anyway, that's what I do. I just toss them. And a lot of it is because we do sell a fair amount of our eggs and I don't want to sell a bad egg to somebody. God, that would scar you for life because a bad egg is a bad egg. So um, anyway, that's kind of what we do. And then a friend of mine was asking, hey, how long are eggs good for if they come from the farm? Generally speaking, about three months, a long time partially because they are coming straight from the source. So there's less shipping and, and all the things that go with commercial eggs. They also, commercial eggs tend to be thoroughly washed and sprayed down with stuff to keep them clean. Um, so three months is, is kind of the norm when you get farm fresh eggs refrigerated. Uh, and you do not need to, okay. This is definitely a personal thing, but she asked if you need to wash them. So I would say no, depending on your squeamishness level, I suppose. Sometimes, so I generally wash my eggs for other people now because especially in the winter, they tend to be muddy and they just don't look as pretty. Um, and if I'm selling them, I will wash them. For me personally, I do not wash them unless they're like something's really funky on them, then I will wash them. But generally for me, I don't wash your hands. We're all washing our hands like crazy. I mean, that's the biggest thing, right? Wash your hands. So totally up to you. And some farms wash and some farms don't wash if they're selling or giving away. So anyway, just some things about eggs. Uh, everybody else on the farm is good. We had a couple of limping sheep this last week, which is fairly normal. We, with our Shetlands, we tend to uh, trim their feet like every quarterly, basically seems to work out well for them. We don't have a ton of rocky ground for them to walk on. So there's no way for their nails to sort of shorten naturally. Um, so we tend to trim their feet every quarter or so, depending. Uh, our, and what's been happening and what happens if the feet get long or if they have any sort of splits in the nails, the mud will get in there because it's been so rainy. Mud will kind of pack in there. And then when it freezes, like it has been at night, that wet mud expands and can cause them a little bit of discomfort. So generally if I go in and trim up feet when that happens, the problem is solved, which did happen. Two of the sheep were a little bit limpy. We pulled them in just like on one foot, pulled them in, their feet looked fine, except they were just a little long, trimmed everything up, blah, blah. So we'll just kind of keep doing that. Um, so there is big news and we do have a farm tour, but it does not include these animals. We've got some new animals coming to the farm kim has gone plum crazy. And we are bringing two little brother kune kune pigs onto the farm. Yes, you heard that right, pigs. So these will be pet pigs to be clear. They will not be pigs for eating. They have been raised by a family that loves them very much as pet pigs. And the family isn't in the same situation and they need to find them a new home and through the birds and the bees and all the things, we were notified. So. We are bringing home these two pigs and we're gonna give them a wonderful new pet home outside, not inside when I say pet, um, and uh, hopefully ease, ease some stress for the family. So this weekend we are going up to get them, Frankie and Johnny. I will put pictures here and I'll talk more about the pigs. I may even do a little Frankie and Johnny coming home video next week at some point. Uh, but we're excited to have them. They are Kune Kune, K-U-N-E, K-U-N-E. It's a specific breed of pigs. They are the smallest breed of pigs, naturally smallest pig of breeds. Breed. Anyway, you get it. So they're about hundred pounds each right now, which is nothing for a pig, nothing. And, um, they'll probably grow. Most pigs kind of grow out for two to three years. And so they'll grow a little bit more, but they should top out at 150 or so max, I would say. Um, so, and it's two boys. They are both castrated. No new testicles on the farm. I mean, we won't get in depth, but I think you get it <laughs> on the animal side. No new testicles on the farm. Um, it's just my rule of thumb moving forward with animals now. So no breeding them. They're just going to live here happily and you will see lots of them coming up in the future. So exciting news. Okay. Without further ado, I've been talking long enough. Let's go to the farm tour, see how everybody's doing. I am so glad I did this the morning I did because it was really cold and then it got really colder. Yes, that's how you say that. So I will be back in just a few minutes and enjoy the animals. Farm tour time and it's very cold. 
well, for some, for us it is. <laughs> it's For some of you, it's not. I think it's about 28 right now. So I'm gonna flip. We'll say good morning. The sheep, of course, were like frolicking and super happy last night. Mitch said he was out finishing chores and uh, you can see all the cobwebs. Some of that's, a lot of that's wool. Some of that's cobwebs on the fence there. You can see that's everybody's coming in ready for breakfast. Chickens are ready for breakfast. We have one chicken who incessantly gets into the cat food that we have up in the shop for our barn cat. <laughs> and we're trying to figure out how to keep her out. She's gonna kill herself by eating that much cat food. So we're trying out different methods to keep her out of the cat food, but so that the cats can still find the food. All right, guys, I gotta put you down for a minute to obviously eat some chickens that are gonna attack me if I don't get them food soon. I'll be right back. It's Velma. Velma and Nigel eating the chicken treats because, of course, why wouldn't they? So, these guys, and I should say this isn't their food, this is just their scratch treats that they get because they're spoiled. And you can hear the sheep are obviously starving. Lakshmi's out there starving. And, uh,. My hand's getting quite cold. So I'll just pause you guys for a sec. I'll be right back. All of our oh so patient sheep doing the dance. Waiting for me. That's a Moira that keeps bouncing up. And uh, she's a rambunctious. Guy. All right, <laughs> I better feed her. Okay, a little bit calmer. Now it's the shuffle to see which bin is better. And I'm gonna go out and give them some minerals while they're all eating. And this guy's gonna run up to me to see if maybe I have something. Hi, Bubby. Hi, Bubby. It's Patrick. I don't have anything special for you. Go in there and get your food. And June's waiting in the corner. Kind of see her over there. And everybody else is waiting patiently. So I'm over here on the other side just tossing some minerals in for them while they finish eating. And they'll come out here and they'll get more minerals. And then they'll go back on their way. Right now, they've got to come see if this is any good. Hi, Bobby. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Just bonked his head there. There's their minerals. It's like dessert. And then they come out. It's Roland. There's Moira, who I can't touch. She's the one lamb. See, they're trying to get out to their minerals. And the roosters are chasing each other off. Mitch has a project out there. I'm gonna walk through you guys and as always sometimes you gotta kneel down to be able to get your head in there. And Oats is one of our ones that was limping. He's much better today after his nail trim. So all right we're gonna go head over and see Junebug. Of course we just missed June's neigh. Here comes Cuddlebug. Cuddlebug had a little bout not feeling well the other day quite sure there's June what was going on but I've got to actually put you guys down to be able to get his food so he doesn't get all the food all right so Packies have their food Alma is the red one here closest to me and you can see she's being a this is just Alma style man <laughs> she's such a jerk so I'm gonna come in and put some pellets in here and make her think that that one's better Usually that works. 
Felicia's kind of the bottom. There's Madrona. My hands are cold, so I might have to switch hands here. See if I can do it without obstructing your warm this hand up. So there's Cuddlebug doing his happy dance, waiting for more food. You can see the sheep are all. Ready. Cuddlebug, I'm coming. He gets a little more food. And June's eating away there. So, while she's eating, which takes her shockingly long considering there's not that much kibble, but we're going to go look for some eggs. Checked on eggs and no eggs to speak of. Chickens in places, but no eggs. So you can see this is one of Mitch's projects currently. And he excavated, there's water down below there. So he, and it was just blackberries, blackberries. So he excavated a lot of the blackberries and he's redoing the fencing. This is one of the sheep pastures. You can see the alpaca are done. They're headed out. Chickens are pretty done. They're going back and it's fun. The chickens all have their own, uh, the roosters all have their own little bit. Hi guys. And there's middle, little Roo. That's a rooster, believe it or not. Hi Oats. So, I've got to go brush. You guys are so cute. I've got to go brush out. June. Okay, so June is brushed. Hi, baby girl. For some reason, I have it very regimented. Somewhat regimented. I guess it just makes it get done. That I have certain days I do her feet and brush her and then brush her mane. On. It's just a way for us to spend some time together each day. Saturdays is the day off. <laughs> she just gets to eat and go. Go frolic. And... You can see all the chickens are kind of just settling in to having eaten their treats and grooming. The sheep are on their way back out to eat. And the alpaca are all the way at the top already. They're already in it. So I'm going to finish cleaning up poop. Oh, and Cuddlebug. Cam is Cuddlebug in the feeder. Cuddlebug, what you doing? Yeah, I know. What a dork. So, June will make her way out in her own fashion. We'll all carry on with our day. I gotta go spin some yarn. I'll see you guys in a minute. Okay, wasn't that fun? I was pretty chilly. My hands, I don't have the best circulation, so I have to tuck in. Hence why I finished the project that I'm gonna start talking about. But, uh, anyway. Animals are good, we'll have some pigs coming up. Okay, so I failed and I didn't go by my in-laws house to get video of the trees planted in the ground done. So I'm gonna make it a point to do that before the next episode so that I can show you just what the trees look like now. And um, we'll see what they do in the spring. So that was the grass seed farm update. And um, otherwise the guys are just working on things, fixing things, all that sort of stuff. That's kind of what they do in the winter and house projects, of course. So, okay, on to what I am working on. So I finished, speaking of cold hands and poor circulation, voila, and I actually was shamed into finishing, shamed by myself, I should say, voila, they're both done. And I did just put a newsletter out that is, has weaving in ends tips, because as I was making these, I was like, oh yes, it's such a great tip. So if you're not on our newsletter, it's a fun place. I mean, you keep up to date on what's going on at the mill, new products, and um, maybe a little bit quicker. I send one out a week. I don't berate you. And then I try to have a little quick tip for all the different fiber crafts. I mean, one quick tip for one. So anyway, these are my hand spun Icelandic wool mittens. And if I get in, you can see all the Icelandicness at its best. You can see all those little hairs flipping out there. Um, I love how they turned out. They are the World's Simplest Mittens by Tin Can Knits. I'll put it down in the show notes also. 
but I love them. And I did shame myself into it because I was like, it should not take you that long to do mittens. It literally takes like, what, an hour? I don't even know if it takes that to knit these up. I mean, per mitten, let's not get crazy. This is me talking as far as knitting, but it doesn't take long. So I sat down and I think I was like, you know, on the second one, of course, and I was like here and I'm like, it takes like an hour to finish it with the thumb. So anyway, really great pattern, especially if you've never done mittens before. Mittens are my lifesaver for keeping my fingers warm. I don't really wear them on the farm because I don't want to destroy them, but I wore them out. I didn't even block them, just straight onto my hands when I went to walk the dogs the other day and my hands stayed perfectly warm as opposed to some other walks we've been on. So anyway, done. I wish I could tell you I have Icelandic yarn in the shop right now, but I do not because I just do not. But I do have something else Icelandic. I'll show you in a minute. So those are done. I've been working on my sweater still. It has a huge ribbing collar on it. So I'm probably two inches into the eight inches needed. So we're getting there. I didn't, I don't have it with me to show you. Um, hand spun. I've been working on hand spun. So I brought it just cause I'm kind of slowly grow amassing on one of my wheels, just kind of spinning away on Shetland. So this is the first you've seen before. This was one of my rams that I hand spun. It's 100% Shetland. Actually the first thing off of one of my wheels that I got new. So this is, oh, you guys, this, he, I mean, everybody that sees it is like, holy smokes. Okay, speaking of natural white, which I did speak of on social media the other day. So this is Shetland. This is Oats, our boy, one of our sheeps, our weathers, and Khaleesi, our white alpaca. And I finally got to do something with the two of them because the whole goal when I got alpaca was to blend it with my sheep. Now, a lot of our alpaca wool is not spectacular. Hers is still really good. You know, it just depends on the alpaca. But so these have been spun in basically the same way. I think I'm about to do a pretty dark Shetland that's not actually ours, but I'm going to spin it into the same weight and then I'm going to find something fun to do because I have so far this. And if you bought some of this roving online, you're so lucky. It is magical. Okay, so that's kind of what I've been working on. And then I've been hand spinning random things, which probably will go into an online shop pretty soon here. So I'm just kind of going through some bits of stash. I did start a braid that I started to spin. And then I lasted for probably a quarter of an ounce. And I was like, nope. I just don't like spinning braids. So I pulled it all off and I'll probably use that braid for something else or I'll give it away. Cause by the way, do you see this cute lamp? Okay. Um, and she's not even turned to her whole cuteness. There's a bow on there. Anyway. Okay. Onward. Oh, I know what else. It's not really what I, well, it is what I've been working on. It's kind of at the mill and it's kind of in just personally, but teaching somebody to hand spin. So this was somebody who was signed up for a class. Somehow it just confusion didn't work out for her. And she was just having a hell of a time in, you know, she's just upset. She had built it up. She was, you know, we're all kind of clinging to random things that keep us sane right now. And this was one of hers was taking this class. And so when she emailed, I was like, I get it. How about if I just teach you to spin? Cause there wasn't another class for months. So I've never taught anyone to spin before and so far so good. I'd like to say it's me that she's spinning away happily after really only one session with fiber, but um, um, it's probably 50%. I'm gonna say 75% her. I don't really know. I've never taught anybody. So the next person I teach to spin, we'll see. I have told you a million times, I'm sure that I sucked at spinning at first. It was so hard for me and I truly believe it was a combination of everything the fiber I was working with, just lots of things. So um, I think that helps me teach other people because I had such a hard time with it. And if I wasn't so damn determined to spin, um, I would have quit for sure. So anyway, that's what's happening. And it has gotten me to thinking, I videotaped the very first one um, where I just was introducing her to the wheel and treadling. And, and then I sent her home to treadle. That was it. I said, maybe you could attach some yarn as you're more comfortable with the treadling and just feel how it takes the yarn from you. Um, just already finished commercial yarn, whatever. So then we met up the second week. So anyway, I videotaped the first one just to kind of see, and I may 
well, here's what I would, I have been wanting to do a spinning, learn to spin for beginners video to put up on YouTube. I've watched some of the ones that are up and I just, for some reason, because again, it was so hard for me. I just want to have a video that truly addresses, it's like the hand spinning for dummies video because that's what I felt like I was. I seriously couldn't, I couldn't even treadle. So I just didn't get any of it. And treadling's not easy. It's not like you just sit down at a wheel and, and magically can treadle. Some people can, I could not. So I think I'm going to go about that. Let me know what you guys think. Do you think it would be a help for those of you who are beginners or um, wanting to learn? I don't know. I'm interested to see what you all think. So let me know. And I do have a video today, a quick little hand spinning video for you to share some of the things that came up as I was teaching her. So, um, but she's doing great. I think we're going to meet up tomorrow, probably here at my house because the mill's 40 degrees and not apt for sitting in. So, uh, and I'm going to teach her plying, but she has fallen in love. I can't even explain to you how well she picked it up. Um, and she had frustrating moments. There were a few moments where she was like, I can't do this. And she got it and she had to take a break and walk around and look at some other stuff. And I get it. And I was like, time to get up, move around. But, um, anyway, I think what I'll do is share with you right now. So this is a little video for hand spinning on joining your fiber. So your fiber breaks or you stop spinning for a minute and you need to rejoin. This is the video for you. I do really think that the reason that people hang on so tightly to their fiber when they are hand spinning is they are afraid the yarn is going to break before it gets onto the wheel. So the more comfortable you are getting that join down the less scared you're going to be of that break. So without further ado, let's go to that. It's very quick. I've got chapters. So if you have no interest in this, just skip ahead and we'll get to some what's going on at the mill. All right, guys, see you in a minute. Enjoy. Okay. So I may have a cat that jumps in here, but I wanted to show you. So I think that as I was teaching Mary to spin, one thing that I realized was and what I've seen is that when we're, especially when we're learning, we're so scared that we're going to break the yarn here as we're spinning that we don't like to let go of it, which means that we tend to over twist it as it goes on because we're like, Ugh, you know, I don't want it to break. So my cat may jump in here at any moment. Uh, so I thought what's one way to make it so we're not so scared of it breaking as if we can join really well. And when I was with Mary, I noticed, and I still do it myself sometimes, I'll sit down at the wheel, I'll get a new fiber, I'll go to join it, and I won't even be, you know, thinking about it, but it's like your feet start and your hand wants to start too. So one thing I worked on with her and mentioned to her is make sure you are watching your fiber. To <laughs> Speaking of my cat, she loves to come up and try to eat the roving. Um, so make sure when you are starting, get your feet started, get a little twist in there. That's great. And then when you're ready, join your fiber, but don't just immediately start working your hands. So give your, your feet and the fiber a minute to twist before you immediately start. And I know it's a lot when you're first starting because it's like your feet go and you want to just start moving because... Uh, you're not quite sure what to do. So I'm just going to show you and then like break it and repeat, break it and repeat. Before Mary left me the other day, I was like, we're going to just do small bits as she was getting the hang of it. So she could start joining, joining, joining and be less afraid of that moment when it breaks because she could be slightly more confident that she could do it. So this is all I'm talking about. So I am holding on to it and I put my fiber up to it and I can see the fibers grabbing. And once I can see that the fibers have grabbed, I start letting it go. And this is not how I generally spin, but just so you can see. So again, I get my spin on, I put my fiber up, I wait to see those fibers start to join. And I think you can see them in the video. And then I start. And when I was working with her because she was new, I kind of had her open up her fiber a bit stick her fiber that her yarn that she had and then hold like that so she's kind of pinching at it and then wait 
and you can see the fiber picking up there, then start moving your hand. That's a horrible example, over-exaggerated, but I think you know, and you know what, honestly, when you're first learning, who cares? If you have a big blurb like that at your join, as long as you're confident, you can work on perfecting all that other stuff. So I'll do it one more time. Okay, my kitten is causing havoc. So one more time, I put the fiber up here just to make it easy for beginners. Start your feet holding on and watching those fibers start to join. And then I start the magic. That way it gets on and it's not just constantly breaking on you. Stop again, put your fiber in, start spinning, wait for it to pick up those fibers and go. Again, not the prettiest join, but you get the point. Okay. I hope that helps some and it, it's just, you know, you're nervous and your feet start and your hand automatically wants to start giving the wheel the yarn, but just wait for a second. Okay, hope that helps. There went Tabitha for you. Okay, welcome back. I hope that helped or made you think if you are thinking about starting to spin that you can do this because you definitely can. People have been doing it since, since forever, literally. So, um, okay, what's going on at the middle? before it froze <laughs> a fair amount. And I will say part of, I just had a hell of a day yesterday. I am, I try to be very uh, focused when I'm at the mill, as far as here's what I want to get done today, tomorrow, blah, blah, blah. I have a schedule, especially right now, because I do need to get some stuff cranked out. Uh, so when that happened, I was like, mm, okay, this is fine. Just function through. So I did keep working. By the time I got to the spinner though, it was obvious that the conditions were just not going to work out. I think it was just too damn cold for the machines um, because the fiber was just, and it really wasn't super, it, the humidity was okay, but for whatever reason, the intense cold was counteracting that the humidity should have been okay. It didn't work out. Always a little hard for me to swallow, but move on, right? That's what you do. So um, I'll probably go in just for an hour or two today to kind of see if I can get some stuff carded. Uh, hopefully the heat will be on next week at some point. So, um, but in the meantime, what I did get done before then, and luckily I got some videos along the way. So one thing is I saved you guys a little bit of this lovely Icelandic. Speaking of Icelandic, so if you want to make your own little gloves, because Icelandic is a perfect, it's a super warm wool, it felts up a little bit. So I have two four ounce bumps of this stunning, like light brown Icelandic wool. And I saved a couple aside for you guys. So they will all post them up in the morning, overnight, whatever. So first come first serve on those, but they are, it's really lovely Icelandic. The color is beautiful. It would make some beautiful mittens, that is for sure. So there's two of those that are going up and I don't know if I have videos, but I know I've got some pictures. So um, I might just put the pictures up here if I don't have video. I don't think I took video of it carding, but we'll see. You'll see in the mail tour if I had it. Sometimes I'm ahead of myself. So there's that. Okay, so the last time we talked about some camel wool, fiber that was with fiber club. I did manage to get it into yarn. As of right now, there are two skeins left. Here it is. So this is, it's so pretty. I would say it's next to skin. It does have a little bit, has some guard hairs poking out here and there. I am not the most sensitive to itch, but if you are sensitive to itch, maybe not, but it would still make great hat, mittens, whatever else. Anyway, so this is Aaron Waite. It is camel and wool, and it's about 60% wool, 40% camel. It, um, it's not 100% perfect, but why do you need 100% perfect yarn? I don't know. It has character, it's lovely. There's two skeins. I think they're 225 yards each, Aaron Waite. Grab it while you can. Um, and they were, they actually spun pretty well. The challenge can be that camel is very short. Um, and then most wools, especially the wool I used, was a little bit longer. So getting that balance on the spinner, but it turned out really lovely. So there's that. And I'm not going to make more of this, no more of it. So there it is. Um, the other thing I did 
because I was at the end of the camel and I thought before I turn because I needed to get to white. So I had to clean the carter out, which I took a video of this time. So you can kind of see the process there, a very short video. Um, but I thought, hey, let's do some mystery bats. So mystery bats are when I am car cleaning up or I have bits left from making yarn or whatever, I pull those bits, I throw them in a bag. Or if I'm pulling stuff off, off the carter when I'm cleaning that I think is salvageable, I toss it in bags and then I make mystery bats. So I just pull all that fiber back out, repurpose it into these bats. I have great video on this so you can kind of see how fun it is. But there are, as of right now, there's one of each of these bats left. So I did one that's kind of natural whites, grays, blacks. So this will open up and then you can spin it. You can strip it down and spin it just like you would roving. And it's just everything but the kitchen sink. If you have allergies, it may not best be the best for you. There is probably some, a little bit of Angora in there. There's definitely alpaca, high amount of wool. Um, and the Angora would be pretty minimal, but it will be in there. So, um, uh oh, my tape stuck. Okay, the other mystery bat turned out very fun. You cannot go wrong with blues and browns. So there's the other one. So there's one of each of these left. If you love them, they are great value. I think I charged three fifty an ounce or something. So super cheap. Um, get on there, grab them. Giveaway. Actually, bring anything home to give away because I was running out cold from the mill and trying to stack everything up but there is a giveaway it's just gonna be a surprise giveaway it's gonna be whatever I decide uh, whether it's fiber or yarn if you are not a hand spinner I will spin it up so that you get it in your form so anybody can join here's what I'd love to know where are you like where do you live and what is the weather like where you are because it's just fun. A lot of times you guys are commenting, I don't necessarily know where you are. So it's always fun to just know where you're coming from. Also see where where this little community we have is and then let me know what your weather's like. Uh, so as usual, by next Tuesday, end of day, have your comment in below. And I think that's it, you guys. Okay, so I think that's everything that's going on at the mill. So without further ado, let's go see what videos I took. If I, well, I was gonna go to the mill. So if I need, I'll get a few more videos um, to add in here, but I think I have enough to keep it fun. So uh, I know there's some camel yarn getting spun and plied. There's some mystery bats. There's some cleaning the carter because most of, I feel like half of what I do is clean when I'm there. So anyway, I will see you in just a few minutes. Enjoy what's going on at the mill. Okay, so we've got some beautiful Icelandic that is on the carter ready to go in. And we're gonna go around the other end because I've just got it started up here. And peek in and see, you can see a little wire sticking out and the fiber is connected to that and we're ready to start down here on the end so let's see how she's gonna look okay it's looking pretty amazing Starting up really lovely. The color is beautiful. And I am super happy with how it's doing. So there you go. I'll get some of this up online. Okay, so mystery bats. I don't do this too terribly often. But since I haven't had a festival in a while, it's time. So this time I just, so mystery bats are just random wool that I have managed to salvage from the carter. Uh, or processing at whatever point and toss it into a big bags and then I go back later and do bats out of them so here I decided to do kind of you can see it's whites and blues and mostly browns on this side so I'm just there is no rhyme or reason nothing is even nothing is weighed and I've got kind of the end of what I'm working with here for this bat and so I'm going to turn her on and let you see what's going on on the other side. A little 
walk around. And there she is. How stunning is that? And it's super fun just to play with. And I sell it for an affordable price, so that makes it even more fun to buy. You can see the webbing coming off really well there. So there you go. There's some mystery bats. Hey you guys, so I'm doing some carter cleaning. So you're looking at the innards of the carter here, and I'm about to turn it, and hopefully the foam won't fall. And you can see all this fiber build up here. The machine is unplugged currently. When I'm doing the big cleans like this, I unplug it. So basically, I am having to pull all this waste that kind of gets built up without knocking you guys over. So I go through and do a big pull like that, yank out. And it's been a while since, um, and then I take a cat brush and basically go through, and it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm going back to white, and usually the bottom layer of this is white because that's where I tend to clean. And so, uh, it doesn't have to be perfect. And you can see there's VM that'll come out with it the cat brush so I just go along and do this and then when I get done with this section just get the majority of it out and then we do our next turn and it takes me I don't know maybe a half hour to actually clean this drum and then I go through and and really pull the, all the stray hairs out, which I do in between most runs, but um, when I'm doing this, I kind of give it a blowout and uh, try to get lots of the stray hairs out so that we're starting fresh. And there you go, sorry, a little awkward, but I think you got the gist of it. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm starting uh, some white palsy next, and I just finished the mystery bats, so we're just going to get this cleared up. Alright, see you guys in a minute. Okay, so for reference, I'm when I have you close up, this is where you are. And I have her all cleaned up now. I'm gonna do a good vacuum. This is what came off of that, which doesn't look as big. It's a fair amount of wool. And so I'm just gonna do a good vacuum, quick blowout, and then we're back up in action, ready to do some Halsey.
so I think that is everything. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you so much for subscribing. Getting to 500 subscribers was such, I don't know, just a weird milestone. And getting to episode 30 and you guys are still watching. So I'm so glad you enjoy what I have to share and I hope it brings some smiles and has enough content to keep you interested. So uh, feel free to ever, to always comment and let me know something you'd like to see. Uh, I may see you in between as Frankie and Johnny come home. If not, I will definitely see you in two weeks. In the meantime, stay healthy. Oh my goodness, it's harder and harder these days. Stay healthy, be kind to your neighbor, and um, make lots and lots of beautiful things.